How's it, how's it, how's it, cuz? It's time to Valaau with me, Mr. Valaau Dickie Chang. Join us as we meet your uncles, your aunties, your brothers, your sisters. Your brothers, sisters, uncles, cousins, neighbors, grandmother, all the ohana. We'll take you to breathtaking places you've never been. Meet famous people you've never seen. Kick back and cruise, you know the ruse. Aloha kawaii, mahalo nui and thank you for joining us this week in yet another exciting and informative episode of Valaau, I'm Dickie Chang. Very recently, the Kauai County Council, along with the Honorable Mayor of our Kauai, uh, Island of Kauai, Mayor Derek S.K. Kawakami, actually approved two and a half full-time positions as far as lifeguards are concerned here in our Garden Island, Kauai. Now, they are going to be the lifeguards, a part of the roving patrol there on our North Shore. Recently, we did a blessing for... Uh, some of the jet skis and of course the fire department under wonderful conditions there at Anini Beach. Now Anini Beach is known to many as Anini, but to the old time local residents, it was always known as Wanini. The story goes that the W or the sign fell off and people just called it Anini. But we're gonna make reference it from now on as Wanini Beach. Today we're gonna to be hearing up and catching up with our very dear friend, the president of our Kauai Lifeguard Association and emergency doctor there at Wilcox Health, Dr. Monty Downs, also our marketing and event coordinator for the Kauai Lifeguard Association, Chantal Zarba. We're here, of course, from our very dear friend Kalani Vieira to our acting deputy fire chief, Kilipaki Vaughn, and of course, the Honorable Mayor of our County of Kauai, Derek S.K. Kawakami. Here's the Honorable Mayor, Derek Kawakami, along with acting deputy chief, Kilipaki Vaughn. What, what does this day mean uh, to the island of Kauai and its residents? Well, um, today it's a monumentous occasion. Um, we're providing some coverage out here at Wanini, uh, commonly known as Anini Beach. Um, we're seeing an increased presence of both visitors and residents now that uh, Black Pot has essentially been shut down. In our good conscience, we cannot promote beaches that don't have lifeguards, and so we'll be able to at least uh, provide some support, uh, have a roving patrol. Um, ultimately, we would like to see a permanent presence as far as a lifeguard tower, fully staffed. Um, I want to say a few thank yous. Um, one, to Koi Lifeguard Association. Um, they have been just a tremendous partner, and uh, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of what we're doing without their support. Of course, to our Ocean Safety Bureau, our fire department, um, all of our public safety officers that are in charge of being guardians of our people and our places. Um, they put their lives at risk every single day. And um, so we're just blessed to have uh, beautiful places, Vahipana, like Wanini. And um, now we finally have people that will be watching out for our cake in our kupuna. You know, it's so interesting. A couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, you know, the surf out of here is pumping 15, 20, 30, 40 foot surf, white water, tragic. A lot of, lot of energy going on and what have you. But even like days today that it seems like it's perfectly calm and it's still, yeah. it's hard to explain to people that there are channels here and there are, uh, with that becomes a rip current. True. I mean, it, it's, it looks absolutely calm. But if you take a look outside um, on that reef, there are waves and these channels create rip currents. And so at the surface of it all, it may look calm. Um, it may call you in, it may look very safe, but those rip currents make the situation very dangerous and very quick. So to anybody watching, if you happen to uh, get stuck in a current, um, stay calm, you won't beat mother nature, let it take you out, and then you wanna swim horizontally outside of the rip and eventually you'll be able to come back in, but stay calm. Um, but like I said, now that we have an increased presence of professionals, um, we're going to save a lot of lives out here. You know, and it's easier said than done because unlike any other sport that I can think of, you cannot tap out or you cannot call time out. Yeah. You know, when we ask people to stay calm, it's probably the hardest thing to do, especially when you, you're feeling that, you know, within your body, within your lungs, just within your brain. Really. Yeah. But, you know, that's the number one thing is just you got to realize you won't win against the ocean. And um, so you go with the flow. And like I said, you swim horizontally. Don't try to fight that current vertically. You're not going to win. 
and you will find a place where you can eventually come back in. But like I said, number one thing is just have common sense. Swim at a beach that's guarded by lifeguards. Um, and if you're in doubt, don't go out. Use your head. You know, lastly, uh, Mayor Kawakami, you know, for the layman, the regular layman, they might say like, okay, well, let's go get uh, half a million dollars or a million dollars. Let's go provide staffing or benefits or what have you. Give us the explanation about not necessarily the red tape, but why is it so difficult and why is it, does it take so long to establish and, and you know, really get a working lifeguard tower uh, going here in the county of Kauai? Well, we have limited amount of resources. That's why we have organizations like the Kauai Lifeguard Association to really uh, cover some spots where we fall short. Of course, there's a process. Um, we take a look into uh, accounting for data. We do visitor counts. Um, we have uh, lifeguards out here who do rove from time to time, so they're collecting data as far as how many encounters they're having, um, how many lives they've saved, how many preventive actions they've taken, meaning, you know, whenever you approach a guest and you tell them, look, please don't go out, today's not the day, uh, we collect all of that data um, because we have to be accountable that we are spending uh, the hard earned money of the taxpayers of Kauai, so we have to be diligent and responsible in our spending. So that in and of itself uh, takes some time and patience. But like Council Member Evslin said, how do you put a price tag on, price tag on a human life? Yeah. Well, thank you, Dickie, and thank you, Vala, for being here and um, honoring the community, honoring the ocean-minded community of uh, Kauai. Um, being here at Wanini is an important, momentous part of the North Shore's culture. Um, today, with the blessing of the Wanini Roving Patrol, it's been a dream come true for Ocean Safety Bureau under the leadership of Chief Kalani Vieira. Um, as I said, mentioned earlier, a natural disaster in one area of the island caused a community-driven project to come to the forefront because of the exposure to Wanini. KLA stepped up with some communications and a council-driven um, resolutions and bills and the mayor support mayor kalakami behind us here and it just um, led to the fruition of the roving patrol and hopefully bigger things to come now uh, we are here with one of your beautiful brand new ocean safety uh you know jet, jet skis. skis i understand there's another one it didn't even get out of the crate or the packaging so to speak but what a blessing uh you mentioned kla we got to tip our hats off to uh, Monty Dom because that, he's outside of being an emergency doctor, the guy is relentlessly insane about uh, life safety and, and who would know best for, for someone that sadly has to unfortunately pronounce people dead just because yes. of uh, maybe yes. lack of education or, you know, it's just unfortunate. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Downs has been an utmost champion for um, visitor and on drownings on Kauai. Um, Kalani called him the junkyard dog of uh, the business and because he, he's very persistent. And we're so most appreciative, again, for Dr. Downs, what he does in the community with KLA, Koi Lifeguard Association, um, in partnership with Andy Melamed and uh, many of the other Koi Lifeguard Association board members. But when it translates to what he sees in the, the operating room and the ER, um, the gift of these tools to help prevent that type of situation going back to the hospital is uh, one of the plus pluses for um, the Office of the Fire Chief, the Kauai Fire Department, Ocean Safety Bureau, the community of Kauai, the community of Wanini. And yes, hopefully there's more to come. Uh, stay tuned. You know, and when you make mention to uh, Dr. Monty Downs being a junkyard dog, <laughs> uh, there's very few that know <laughs> that okay, he actually well, was well, a bulldog, you, right. a graduate of the University of Yale, and he was a boxer, technically yeah. speaking, and he played So, uh, hey, there's plenty of thanks to go around with, uh, here. George W. Bush. Uh, you know, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, he crazy. also played rugby yeah. with my my, my father-in-law, the, the late Dr. Gary Blake, who was on the Yale rugby team. And so they played against each other, and they had a very collegial, collegial um, relationship. Somehow they both ended up here on Kauai, and again, uh, with, without the leadership of Dr. Downs and his championship uh, pedigree of pushing it forward into the community, um, a lot would not be happening without his support and Kauai Lifeguard Association. And of course, uh, many people remember your uh, father-in-law, the late Dr. Uh, Blake, but uh, nonetheless, I'm sure he would be 
extremely thrilled and happy to see water safety in an area that is was his technically his backyard. You know, and I'm glad you mentioned uh, somebody like Andy Malamed because when Andy, a passionate ocean waterman himself, uh, jumped on board because his mission was to save lives. You know, with this past brilliant, incredible fifth wave that we had, uh, you know, in the summer at last year of the, at the Marriott. I mean, in the past five years or so, in conjunction with the beach bashes, all of that stuff coming right around the corner, uh, there was pretty much close to a million dollars that was actually raised uh, by the community, the caring yes. community, about yes. this worthy cause. Yes, uh, you know, it takes a lot of people's ownership and initiative to really carry out the mission of the Kauai Lifeguard Association, help the Ocean Safety Bureau carry out our mission. Um, guys like Andy Melamed, um, Dr. Downs have really made it possible to have build capacity in the community for events and momentous days like this. Um, it, again, it would not happen without everybody's support. You know, the, the fifth wave and what they put together. We have the Mahalo Bash coming up July, uh, June 1st of 2019. Stay tuned for that. And a close to a million dollars worth of support. That's unheard of. Unheard of. Um, I think there are a lot of my counterparts, my colleagues across the islands that are very, very jealous of the opportunities that we have here. And so it wouldn't happen without Kauai support. Yeah, and, and thank you very much for mentioning the beach bash that's going to be happening uh, at June the Kauai 1st. Marriott Resort yes. and Beach Club on uh, Kalapaki Beach itself. Now, another prelude that we want to just let everybody know is next week, Thursday, uh, we're going to be doing on March 14th, March 14th. the uh, yes. uh, Ocean uh, first, first quarter Chamber of, of Commerce, Commerce function in conjunction with the Kauai Lifeguard Association Fifth and the Kauai Marriott Resort and Beach Club. Held I mean, July that's going to be a very, very well attended uh, event. It's not considered a fundraiser, but it's really Jonathan more to River. create awareness with not just the business people, the visitors, um, the local residents, I mean, whoever comes to the members of the chamber as to how important the Kauai Lifeguard Association, Junior Lifeguard uh, Association, and everybody else entwined and entangled uh, for the purposes of making Kauai uh, all of our kuleana and making it safe for everyone. Yeah, you know, and with uh, Chantal Zarba's leadership and connections and connectivity to the Chamber of Commerce in her prior roles, um, you know, we've been able to leverage the opportunities that Koi Lifeguard Association is featured in this prominent role in the first quarter, hosting the first quarter membership meeting and Ocean Mining Community. As you see, this is an ocean mining, mining community. The visitor industry does come here to participate in our ocean. Um, and for the support that comes from Mahalo Bash, from the fifth wave, the sixth wave, the seventh wave, or any other fundraiser that comes our way, it really comes to help protect the visitors. And of course, our own residents, Kamaina. Uh, we're, again, we're so thankful that we have lots of relationships out there and to be able to leverage that connectivity back into providing uh, customer service to the community is, is amazing. You know, um, Kilipak Ivan, lastly, um, you know, not only are the fundraisers conscious awareness and Kokua and donation support, but you gotta admit, these parties are <laughs> yeah. unbelievable, unbelievable, like good fun entertainment parties, and it's really a party, but it's kind of like funny and fun. And you can tell it's a successful party because toward the end of the party, nobody left. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's an amazing turnout. It's one of the better fundraisers I've ever attended. I, and it's just driven by community and people's love and support of the lifeguard uh, community, our workforce. Um, you know, without the support, again, from hotels and the visitor industry to provide the capacity to hold these type of events, um, it... We just wouldn't be able to do our thing, you know, and we not right now we have 11 towers on the island of Kauai and hopefully we can continue to build that presence through the islands. There are many other unlifeguarded um, beaches around. Um, we People are venturing deeper into these areas. They love our beauty. The beauty of our islands, the mana of our islands can sometimes kill people, you know, and, and that's the sad part of it. But Along with this, these opportunities and the support and the kako'o of Kauai, it really makes things happen for us and uh, we allow the visitors and our kama'aina to be safe, protected and thriving.
Thank you very much to our acting deputy chief of our uh, Kauai Fire Department, Kilipaki Vaughn, and of course, the Honorable Mayor, Mayor Derek S.K. Kawakami. We're going to have to take a short break. When we come back, we'll be speaking with our water safety supervisor officer, none other than our very dear friend, Kalani Vieira. Captain Andy sailing. Nobody has more fun. Captain Andy, the ultimate sailing adventure. Feel the beauty of this sign up. Down from the beaches to the highest mountain. Different people living as one. In harmony under the sun on the island. In the middle of the sea. On the Pool Kea island. Golf Course. Call for your tea times today. The Kauai Lifeguard Association Fifth Wave Celebration was recently held on July 27th at the Kauai Marriott's Grand Ballroom. The lineup of entertainers included the Jonathan Rivera Trio, Paula Funga, and headliner Makana. All the entertainers were joined on stage by world-renowned live art performer Norton Wisdom, whose work along with his award-winning and talented daughter Irish Wisdom was featured in a silent auction area that received a lot of action. Prizes were drawn periodically throughout the night including Alaska Airlines' grand prize trip for two to Napa's Sonoma Wine Country. And the live auction was held on stage for a Laleo Kinimaka Kauai Wood Alaya board made especially for the evening. It, along with a five-day trip to Oahu and an autographed John John Flores World's number one surf jersey. The bidding was quite spirited and was eventually won with a $10,500 donation bid by Preston Myers of Safari Helicopters. The Kauai Marriott's award-winning buffet as well as stirring videos of ocean action were continuous throughout the evening and a sold-out crowd helped net over $125,000 for ocean safety equipment and programs while the celebration saluted Kauai's lifeguards during the most treacherous year of life-threatening floods, rains, and challenging conditions. The fifth wave, along with the Beach Bash in previous years, has helped to raise nearly $1 million thanks to support with our Kauai ocean-minded community. No, Aloha Kauai, we're back, and we're here, with which we are now hopefully starting to call the real name of the beach that we know as Anini, but we're going to make refer reference to it as Wanini. And with me is a young man that needs no introduction in the entire Hawaiian island archipelago, Kalani Vieira. What a wonderful day. How, how, how are you feeling today? Oh, I feel f f fully honored and fully stoked and happy because uh, we've been kind of having uh, ideas and goals. I remember 20 plus years ago about trying to get lifeguard services down here at Wanini. And it, it finally came through, you know, with all the help from the Kauai Lifeguard Association, people from the community and, uh, and our new administration really came together and make this, make this uh, val valuable, important operation uh, come true. You know, um, Kalani, I remember we've, we were having conversations with you years ago and you had made mention that made so much sense. Like, you know, when somebody has a car and the car is 10 years old, 12 years old, 15 years old, you can feel the slippage or the wear and tear or, you know, maybe it's not, you know, the gas line is not, it's not responsive. And when you started to get the first of the brand new jet skis, you could automatically feel the difference between, no offense, but driving a Volkswagen Beetle to like a Porsche or a Cadillac or whatever you want to. I mean, you know, tell us the difference about how important it is to have a well-maintained, you know, oiled machine. Yeah, so as you know, the, the, the jet ski or the rescue craft, we call it, is such a big part of our operation now. Uh, when I started my career 23 years ago, the jet skis or the rescue crafts that came before was all small, little, we used to call them the turtles. You know, and today, with all the new technology and electronics, uh, it, they're making some really beautiful machines that are much more stronger, much more powerful. You can pick up more people. The, the maintenance is a little bit easier. So the technology with our rescue craft has come a long way. 
And I, I would consider our jet ski as part of, it's like the fire truck of a uh, firefighter. So um, we're only getting better with the, the equipment. And I, I don't think we, that's part of, it's like our rescue board now. It's just part of our standard equipment for lifeguarding now. So, uh, you know, we can see the, sp uh, the specs of the jet ski, but how much gallon tank do you have? And is there any uh, guesstimation as to perhaps what kind of mileage per gallon you get? So the good question. So the the fuel tank is a capacity of 18 and a half gallons, and depending on how how hard you are on the throttle, meaning if you're idling, you probably can go four or five hours. Uh, but if you're hard on the throttle, obviously you use more fuel, so you probably can go for a couple hours. So it's all depending on the operators. Um, you know, on what kind of situation is in, and we always carry extra fuel in our trucks just in case we need to refuel. Well, that's a very interesting stat because I don't, I don't think anybody would suspect. You know, most cars maybe you got 12 gallon, 14 gallon, 16 gallon, but you know, it's probably a big truck that has 18, 20 gallon tank for that truck. Now, as an instructor, and you've instructed many over the years, uh, what kind of wear and tear is on the body? Because it's almost, I guess, like doing motocross or doing some very rigorous because the body's got to take some cracks you know what I mean it's like I mean like after a rough day when you wake up I mean you probably fall asleep one would probably fall asleep like you know maybe you got to ice down or one warm lie down in a tub kind of action but I would almost imagine that the next day you're feeling stuff that you never felt on your legs your knees your back your neck I mean is that typical of what one feels like uh, yeah so that's very good point so it's very physical demanding uh, the, our rescue craft operators go to rigorous training they they are uh, required to do even a harder agility requirement than our normal lifeguards at the tower so they need to train obviously when you get older obviously your body probably won't be you know, probably won't be able to take all the abuse, but yeah, if you're operating the, the craft in rough water, especially, it's kind of considered as motocross riding because you're jumping and using a lot of your legs, your back, your, your arms. So if you, if you had a long day on a rescue craft, yeah, you go home beat. So it's like having CrossFit and, you know, you know, feeling your, yourself tired the next day. But the guys, they really train hard. We try to keep them in really good physical shape. And then later on in the career, if they decide to, maybe this is not for me, maybe they can move up the ranking into the supervisor role. Well, that's a very interesting point because little do we know, you know, not only is it physical, uh, you know, brutality, if you will, but it's got to be majorly psychological because your, your mind must be just pumping and there's no margin for error. But some of the, the waves and the swells and the white water alone, that adrenaline and that, uh, that vibe or... I would imagine, no offense to anybody, but I would be terrifiedly frightened. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, so that's also correct. So besides being physical demanding, it's, all a, it's also a stress, you know, because the, the rescue craft operators will be putting themselves at, at a higher risk than the normal lifeguard tower uh, lifeguard because they'll be responding in surf as, as tall as the coconut trees or the telephone poles. And they'll be putting their lives on the line more than the normal lifeguard. Uh, so that's when the training, keeping yourself in physically fit and mentally, you know, obviously we always train the guys that, hey, your, your safety becomes first. And if the surf is 50 to 60 feet and you feel that it's, un, it's crazy enough to go out, then we might have to have not and not go out because it's too dangerous for them. You know, and that's very, very well said, Kalani Vieira, because in layman's term, the long story short, people shouldn't be putting themselves in harm's way if, if, if in doubt, do not go out. But they're also putting the life, save the lifeguards, you know, into harm's way because some guys go, nah, you know what, I'm, I'm going to chance them. I'm going to go out there, go help them. But, you know, it, it sometimes is in double jeopardy. You know, you know what I mean? Like, you know, not only, not only is the, one trying to be rescued, rescued, trying to be rescued, but the one that's trying to rescue them, yeah. that's horrors for them too. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, the lifeguards really put their lives on the line, especially when the surf or the conditions are uh, dangerous. We have uh, visitors or even local residents, you know, might be going into a situation that, you know, it's beyond their limits. And then now 
we got dispatched and now we got to put our lives in the line to go save those people. So it's all about educating yourself and, and the bottom line is, you know, this when in doubt, don't go out. Well, I, we just want to take this opportunity, Kalani Vieira, for uh, being our water safety supervisor and the officers. But on behalf of the people of Kauai, both the Malahini and the Kama'aina, the visitor and the local people, thank you for your passion, thank you for your training, and most impa uh, importantly, thank you for your um, relentless lobbying and educating because having the Kauai County Council, having the state, having the Kauai Lifeguard Association, having the community as a whole, uh, you had made mention that this is everybody's kuleana and you know, it's all, all of our responsibilities just from the start, just to tell people, if in doubt, do not go out. And, and we're serious about that because, uh, you know, emergency responders, you know, the firefighters, the police, the, the hospital, the hospice. I mean, when one life is taken, so many people pain by the dozens. Yes, so that's also very true. So, you know, I always try to pe preach that we, we all live on this beautiful island, whether you're a local resident or visitor owner, a uh, 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 company owner or a visitor industry or, or a professional. We all should be, you know, taking our kuleana and trying to do the best job we can by warning your family and friends or by taking care of your visitors who come in. Whether you're a fisherman or a surfer, I think we all should work together, whether you're a professional or not. And that's what I talk about kuleana, I think. That's part of our kuleana. And for me, lobbying, it's, it's automatic because I, I have a passion of what we do and I'm trying to be proactive. And obviously, you know that Kauai is a visitor uh, economic benefit, so we need to take care of visitors and our locals. So uh, kuleana is very important. We all should be uh, lifeguards wherever you, wherever you uh, live on the island. Thank you once again to our Ocean Safety Supervisor, Kalani Vieira. We're going to have to take a short break. When we come back, we'll be speaking with the event coordinator and the marketing coordinator for our Kauai Lifeguard Association to tell us about an up-and-coming first quarter chamber event that's going to be scheduled at the Kauai Marriott Resort and Beach Club. Mark down your cal calendars in advance, May 14th there at the Grand Ballroom, again at the Kauai Marriott Resort and Beach Club. And we'll also be telling you about our beach bash that is scheduled there at Kalapaki at the Marriott for June 1st. Don't go away. Next up, our very dear friend, the lovely... Chantal Zarba. Healthier is quality care close to home. Healthier is state-of-the-art facilities and the largest and best team of doctors on Kauai. It's specialty care and caring in a special way. Healthier is Kauai's only comprehensive bone and joint center with expertise in joint replacement, hands, feet, ankles, and sports medicine. Wilcox Health creating a healthier Hawaii. Aloha, I'm Barbara Bennett, owner and publisher of the Islands Monthly Community Magazine for Kauai. Available at newsstands, mailed to you by request, or at the Honolulu and Lahui airports. I invite you to join our local residents and read our stories. All local, all community, all Kauai. Read for Kauai Magazine on our website, forkauaionline.com with more feature stories, videos, daily calendar, and local news that will excite and interest you. Visit us daily, weekly on the web, and monthly in print. Mahalo and aloha. Aloha, my name is Crystal Yap here at King Auto Center. I am the internet sales coordinator. If you don't have time to come into the dealership, please feel free to inquire online. I am able to answer any emails, send over quotes, um, get you basically approved and ready to go so that way by the time you get into our dealership, you just test drive and sign time paperwork. Once again, my name is Crystal Yap and I'm looking forward to serving you here at King Auto Center. Please visit us at www.kingautocenter.com. Welcome back, Kauai. Let's head back up into Wanini Beach. There we had an opportunity to speak to our event and marketing coordinator for our Kauai Lifeguard Association, here to tell us about upcoming dates we need to remember, and a special mahalo and aloha from our very dear friend, president of our Kauai Lifeguard Association, emergency doctor at Wilcox Health, Monty Downs.
We want you to join us at the Kauai Chamber of Commerce first quarter membership meeting. That's where we're going to have a panel of speakers. It's going to be more of a talk story type of theme, so not, not formal. It's going to definitely be light, um, lighthearted. And then we're also having a special guest, Mike Coots. So on the panel of discussions, we're going to have Monty Downs, president of KLA. We're also going to have Kalani Vieira. And then we're going to have Sue Konoho for the visitor industry. And then um, Errol Kaneshiro for the county uh, representative and then like I said Mike Coots he's going to be our special guest that night and he's going to be talking about his experience as a shark survivor so very nice. Now how did this idea it's, it's very interesting because the Kauai Lifeguard Association is partnering with the host for that evening the Kauai Marriott Resort and Beach Club how does this come full circle because it's a great idea for our first brand new New Year's quarter quarterly Chamber of Commerce event. Yes, it was a great idea. And so Paul Toner, the general manager of the Kauai Beach Resort and Beach Club, he and Kauai Lifeguard Association are co-sponsoring this event. So we are the, the co-sponsors for this first chamber quarterly membership meeting. So we are looking forward because like you said, it's going to be very casual, very, very, very casual. lax, but it's going to yes. be kind of like a uh, Paul Toner is going to be the moderator, so people are going to talk about ocean safety. Yes. Uh, you talked a little bit about Mike Coots. I think a lot of people uh, know Mike Coots, respect yes. Mike Coots, because uh, I guess he was bodyboarding somewhere on the west side, Majors Bay or what have you, and then uh, he is uh, a, a, survivor, a survivor, but he's a professional photographer. Surfer. You know, He's a waterman. Yes. And, and, wow, what, a, what an honor to get somebody of, of that caliber, um, you know, because ocean safety is one thing, but I guess... Uh, being bit by a shark is like almost <laughs> getting struck by a lightning. It's not right. an everyday thing. It's not an everyday thing, but you know he's going to share us, a, you know, a personal story of how he feels the ocean is still needed to be respected. The animals, everything, the creatures around us, everything in the land needs to be respected. And I think his story is going to touch on a lot of people, especially with their scares of the ocean. You know, Koi Lifeguard Association. We are here to create an ocean-minded community and this is what our, our first stepping stone for this year is going to be the quarterly membership meeting very informal talk story at the chamber uh, first quarter and we invite all of you to come and help us and the business community to continue the ocean mining community campaigns that we have going on so we're going to have a lot of uh, publicity we've had had a lot of publicity uh, in conjunction with the chamber blast or what have you but can you tell us uh, offhand how can one register for those that are watching right now for those that are watching, please go to kawaiichamber.org and re register for the March 14th, that's a Thursday, event, first quarter chamber membership meeting, and that is a co-sponsorship by Kauai Marriott Resort and Kauai Lifeguard Association. So also, uh, on another note, just so we can uh, let the uh, community know and be aware of, uh, you're also planning to do a beach bash. We had a beach bash a couple of years ago uh, at Kalapaki. It's going to happen again at Kalapaki. Can you give us a sneak preview as to what that event might look like and be? Absolutely. So at the Chamber membership, we're going to unveil more about the details of our Beach Bash, but it's going to be on June 1st, and it's going to be a lot of great things happening. Uh, we have live entertainment by Greenstone Project. We also have an award-winning barbecue um, provided by the Kauai Marriott Resorts team. There's going to be a lot of great prizes, things going on, and again, that's going to be our annual fundraiser. So we encourage everyone to come out, support Kauai Lifeguard Association, support our life, our Sentinels of the Sea, and to just have a great time it's not going to be a ballroom setting we're going to have some pretty good things happening and i encourage you to come to the chamber event so that you can you can hear all the great stuff that's going to be planned beautiful and we just want to thank you and congratulate you for being here and also being one of the organizers for this wonderful day for the community of Kauai here at what was what we want to know was always wanini wanini then it became anini, anini. and then it's back to wanini. wanini but thank you for putting this uh, very very happy day you want to cheer your little out to the Beautiful people of Kauai as far as, uh, you know, on your marketing and events coordinator cap for the uh, Kauai Lifeguard Association and just thanking everybody in advance for uh, a great experience and for all their kokua within this community. Absolutely. I strongly believe if we're going to be asking our community to, to support us in this organization, then we also need to give back. And so by doing that, we are, we are giving equipment, things to keep our community safe, as well as our visitors. And today was an iconic moment because my family is from Wanini. We have a home down at the end of the road. And this was our playing ground. This is exactly what Mehana was saying. This is where we collected our food and, and we community uh, we 
came together as a family. So to see today happen and through the lobbying efforts of everybody from the from the community, Koi Lifeguard Association couldn't do it without you. And so I want to say a heartfelt mahalo to all of you who support us and our organizations and our Ocean Minded Community campaigns. Mahalo. Okay, hi, this is uh, Dr. Monty Downs. I'm president of the Kauai Lifeguard Association out here at this uh, remarkable Anini event today, Wanini, we're trying to call it now, and, uh, and where we're increasing our roving patrol presence so really we'll be able to guard this beach, I hope, all the time, uh, nine through five. We'll see if we're actually able to, to achieve that, but uh, we're certainly working our way towards full-time coverage here. And uh, we couldn't do it without our donors and sponsors. So thank you to all of you. And also a couple last things I want to say is we do have the uh, Chamber of Commerce event March 14th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. at the Marriott. So please keep uh, trying to figure out how to sign up for that. There's some uh, terrific prizes uh, that you can win if you show up for that, including free, uh, free trip for two by Alaskan Airlines on any of their routes. And then our beach bash is on June 1st, so we're hoping that some of you can uh, come out again. We decided this year not to do the full wave fundraisers that we've done in the past, just because uh, we've asked a lot of you, uh, and you've all come through, which has allowed today to happen. But we're gonna ask a little more of you, and hopefully you can come and have a great day at the beach bash and continue supporting making Kauai safer. Aloha and vala'au. Aloha everybody. My name is uh, Jonathan Fabian. I'm one of the sales associate here at uh, King Auto Center. Uh, I graduated Kahili um, in the year 2000. Um, something about me, I'm one of the salespeople here that speaks a fluent Tagalog. So for any of the Filipinos out there, um, you can come inside here, ask for Jonathan, and I'd be able to explain things to you sometimes if you can't understand it. Uh, right beside me, I got the new uh, JL Jeep Wrangler. Um, this is an unlimited sports model. Uh, it's new beefed up. The grill is a little bit different. The accents are still the same. We still got the seven slot grill, which is a Jeep signature grill. Some of the new updated features about this is, well, they got the, the lights on the fenders now. And this is the soft top rider. And it's a lot easier to take off the tops and the doors are uh, also upgraded so that you can take them off a lot easier. Your front windshield comes down too, so it's really great when you go out to have some fun and uh, be open and enjoy the island. Uh, this also has a rear backup camera, which is something a little bit different uh, for the Wranglers. And this Jeep also has a hands-free technology, Bluetooth, um, so you can hook up your phone, you can listen to music, you can control everything on the steering wheel um, without ever looking at your phone. Once again, my name is uh, Jonathan Fabian. I'm one of the sales associates here at uh, King Auto Center. Uh, maraming salamat sa aking mga kababayan. Uh, mabuhay and aloha. Healthier is quality care close to home. Healthier is state-of-the-art facilities and the largest and best team of doctors on Kauai. It's specialty care and caring in a special way. Healthier is Kauai's only comprehensive bone and joint center with expertise in joint replacement, hands, feet, ankles, and sports medicine. Wilcox Health, creating a healthier Hawaii. Welcome back Kauai. As many of us know, the duties of our rescue firefighters, i.e. the lifeguards, is not just in the ocean water, but obviously it happens in our river waters itself, up Mauka and the lands itself. Now remember, on August, I beg your pardon, April 13th of last year, just shy of a year ago, we had that big massive floods on the island of Kauai, specifically the North Shore. Well, guess what? The lifeguards had to deploy their jet skis in Hanale Bay, and to my understanding, they actually launched somewhere near the Hanalei River, uh, the Hanalei Bridge itself, and we had an opportunity to catch up with uh, Kalani Vieira and, of course, one of the jet skis and GoPro operators, uh, other than then Captain Tyrus Ciali. So here's uh, footage of last year's flood, and this is just to remind us what the lifeguards do here in our Garden Island, Nicoy. Here's Water Safety Supervisor Kalani Vieira. 
Well, first of all, Sunday early morning, I think this is about probably 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, I got a call from my boss, the Deputy Chief Keely Pocky Vaughn from the Fire Department. I guess the, the EOC was activated, the Emergency Operations Center. I was, I was activated. He called me and, uh, and, and asked me if I could somehow get our jet skis up in mobile and see if we could get the jet skis up to the North Shore by first light. Um, so I tried to, I got the call, I called him back, I'll see, I told him what I, uh, see what I can do. So I started making calls to my, some of my boys and see if we can get the skis up and going. Uh, finally, when I got everybody's call back and we started, uh, started getting all our equipment together, we probably pulled out of Poipu at 7.30 in the morning and took us about almost two hours just to get to the North Shore because the roads, some roads was impassable, flooding, uh, the police closed some of the roads like uh, like Wailo River especially, so it took us a while to get up there and uh, by the time we got to the North Shore, it was probably 9, 9 o'clock in the morning. Now, let me ask you this question. I mean, many of us awoke to maybe thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening. Uh, wh from where you were living, did you get rain and were you, first and foremost, were you surprised that there was a flooding on the North Shore? Uh, I live in the, on the South Shore and it wasn't as bad uh, on the South Shore. It was definitely raining, but wasn't any strong. Uh, I could hear the thunder and I could see the lightning from a distance, but wasn't really... Uh, heavy in the Koloa or the south side area early that morning but on the way out to the north shore that morning man the rain and the, the thunder and lightning was so heavy I mean I was kind of surprised that I don't know what much we could have done because the, the conditions were so incredible just driving to the north shore passing the Kila uh, the Anahola River and passing the Kila, uh, Kalia River was like crazy so looking at that, and I was thinking, oh, if this is bad here, I, I, assuming that the Hanalei would be really bad also. You know, it's, it's pretty, uh, I actually went out to go look at Wailua Falls, which I've never seen so much power coming from the falls. I saw Opaika Falls. I actually saw a waterfall coming from, down from the Sleeping Giant. And when I talk to tourists and when I talk to the visitors, the local people convey to people, like they've never, ever, ever seen it like that in their life but true story a lot of things what people see for local residents they never ever 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 saw that in their life and that's not an exaggeration uh, no not at all um, I've been on this island my whole life 52 years and that's probably the worst I ever seen uh, the devastation in Hanalei and I've been talking to a lot of locals kapunas in Hanalei uh, the past few days and they live in Hanalei 60 plus years and they say that's the worst they ever seen that flooding in Hanalei. Now how far could you and your crew actually get speaking of Hanalei? How, how, how far were you able to get out there? Well on Sunday uh, obviously the roads was all closed the only um, place that we could launch from was literally off the Hanalei Pier I mean not the Hanalei Pier but the Hanalei Bridge that's that was the only place we could launch from so we we got our jet skis down to the Hanalei Bridge and we literally launched it right off the edge of the, the Hanalei um, Bridge because that was the only place safe enough to, to launch our jet skis. Once we got our jet skis in the, in the water of the river, I, I couldn't find the, the actual river because the whole Hanalei Valley was full of water. I could pretty much drive my jet ski wherever I wanted because it was deep enough, but the only hazard was it was a lot of debris. Um, a lot of rubbish, logs, leaves, branches, uh, animals. We literally passed uh, animals swimming, like uh, the bison and the buffaloes were swimming, uh, passing people's property, cars, uh, literally houses being washed down the river. You know, one of the most famous pictures of the Hanalei Bay obviously was a bison or a buffalo there at Hanalei Bay. Uh, you mentioned them being on the water and what, what have you, but. Um, you know, it's kind of weird because these are 100 pound creatures that even for them for tread water to survive. Um, were you surprised sincerely or how do we describe the fact that there was really no major industry and or uh, in, uh, injuries and or loss of life? Yeah, I'm, I'm totally blown away um, just looking at all the full devastation of what happened. And um, I'm happy to say that we, we didn't lose any life. Uh, I know people's houses got totally destroyed and people's houses got washed away. Uh, animals, we probably lost a lot of animals, probably 
some of the bison got lost and uh, but I'm I'm very happy to say that we did not lose a life. That is um, just shy of miraculous. And when you mention the animals, you know what a lot of people don't really realize, and I want to kudos to the Kauai Humane Society, because a lot of the people that went on a date or on a dinner, I mean, nobody knew what the heck was happening. So they left to get up to the big city, albeit Princeville or Kapa'a or what have you. And so many of them were not able to return for several days that and they left their you know their dogs their cats their beloved loved ones uh only to the rescue of the humane i mean this is Kauai is known for resilience and and you know a lot of guys uh, ohana and fe people and family up there on the north shore but i mean what impressed you the most as to how everybody kind of like came together more so many people took off from their daytime job and basically just did what they needed to do to help yeah and that's a great example of uh, how Kauai uh, people come together. Um, when I went down there on Sunday, it was still really dangerous to do any type of work around the river, but still people was doing the best again, putting their differences aside and just getting uh, to help their fellow neighbors and friends. Uh, even the past couple of days when I went down to the North Shore, just looking at the amount of people coming down and their support and helping uh, people from the west side coming around on their boats with a bunch of supplies and just showing up and, hey, how can we help? Where can we unload this? So we kind of was guiding people in and out, uh, letting them unload supplies, and then all of a sudden they're, they're put to work and they're, now they're shuttling people back and forth and now they're shuttling supplies and people just came out of the woodworks just to help. And, and that's what Kauai is all about because just like the hurricanes that we went through there's people just coming out of the woodworks just to help in any way they can and that's one thing great about Kauai. And no agenda and thank you for mentioning our cousins and our ohana out there from the west side because many of them launched from Kikiola or Polehale or wherever they could get going and obviously the fastest route for them pretty much is to go to Nepali all the way out to Haena, Ke'e, tunnels, what have you. Uh, basically because of the fact that they can kind of do the deal. And mind you, there's wind, there's surf. I mean, these guys' bodies get bar battered also, but everything is all in a, a mission. It really is a mission to have their canned goods and their water and the supplies that people need, albeit uh, hygienic diapers or fruits, flowers, vegetables, whatever they can to kuku, it must have been tearful. Yeah, that, that's very true. And, you know, and that, that shows uh, how, how a community comes together and help out each other. Uh, I have about maybe four lifeguards that lived in the Hyena, uh, Hanale area, they lost their houses. And they're still working today. Um, they're putting their houses on the side right now because there's not much they can do about it right now but they're still working they're still helping people and they're still down there working wherever they can and, and providing service or assistance with first aid or or whatever they can right now and they're still working and, and they lost everything you know in a profession and by the way if you just joined us i'm here with kalani Vieira, uh with our uh, lifeguard association of course our Kauai fire department what have you but you know there's a lot of stuff that you saw you saw obviously from the ocean but did you see any of, I, I understand that there's like 11 landslides, massive landslides that, I mean, were you even, even I mean, no, not everybody got to see everything, but were you able to see what the road situation was like? I didn't have a chance to see it by air or by on land, but I seen a lot of the, the devastation from, from the ocean because uh, we try to get in as close as we can with our jet skis and, and from, from the ocean looking towards the land, you could really see big gouges in the, in the mountainside and big raw dirt areas and that's kind of the, the areas that got landslide. And uh, the water was full of debris. That was another big hazard uh, working on the, the skis and the boats that they had to really avoid a lot of debris in the water because obviously if you suck something up in your jet ski or in your impeller, it could be a, a hazard. So all of those and the waves and the wind, um, I'm happy to say the waves are not that big. If the waves was big, it would really, uh, have more hazards of people trying to transfer people and supplies with the boat. So uh, the mother nature is kind of bearing with us right now just to kind of get through this hard time. But it, it, looking from the ocean in, it, it looks kind of like a war zone. You know, I, th I want to just say thank you about mentioning the debris because obviously it is an obstacle for a powered vehicle such as a jet ski or the roving patrol. Um, 
and again, yet another reason to uh, support the Kauai Lifeguard Association, which we'll talk a little bit about. Now, let us not forget the Wailua River. Let us not forget the other rivers and everything else, because I saw the breeze. I, I mean, the, the day of Sunday afternoon, you know, the, the bridge was plugged with, with a lot of different debris. But I've seen trees on the uh, Lidgate Park side. First of all, Lidgate Park was full. I mean, that, you can't even... You, can't, you, don't walk, even, yeah. you can't walk through the pond right now with, with so much logs in the pond. That, that's, that's unbelievable. But we also cannot forget um, our, our cousins and our ohana there sure. in the Koloa area. Sure. Uh, but the, and, and, and respectfully for everyone, I always tell people the differences are that everybody can kokua these places because there's access. And then from the Wainuiaa, Hyena area, Hanalei, beyond. Uh, if you don't have any business up there, sincerely, uh, no go, just we'll go check it out. Go yeah. if you can help. Yeah, so that's true. Um, a lot of people are being, you know, they want to go and look at what's going on down there, but uh, the only way into Wainuhia and Ke and uh, Hyena area is by either air or by, by water. Um, so I think you can drive probably only to the Hanalei town, but, you know, a lot of people are working in there. They're trying to get people in and out uh, equipment through the barge and stuff and trying to get them into Wainiha. But there's other locations that you can really be of help. There's Anahola needs some help with the, the cleanup over there in Anahola. People lost their uh, property and and stuff like that in Anahola. Koloa Town, there's another place in Koloa Town that got devastated. A few houses got damaged from the uh, in Koloa. Lawai Valley, there's some places in Lawai Valley that got, kind of got damaged. So there's a lot of ways you can help not only for the North Shore guys but there's other locations that you could come by and help donate there's uh, a lot of places that you can donate not only for Hanalei but for other places on very, the island. Yeah I'm sorry to interrupt but Kalani very well said and thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Bruce and I was heading up into the North Shore the other day and when we pass Anahola I've been here for 30 years he's been here for over 40 years and when we looked at Anahola, we went, oh, that bugger was so far back. We never even know these kind of places existed. It was only because of the flood that exposed what we don't see from the road. Yeah, that's correct. So um, one of our lifeguards lived in Anahola, and he lost everything. Uh, I guess he bought some property. He was living in, him and his girlfriend was living in a makeshift shack right now while they were starting to build their, their home. And they barely escaped with their lives that night of the flood. So they lost everything. So... Uh, we're trying to help him out to try to get him some clothes and whatever uh, assistance we can to help him. But, yeah, he, he, he's uh, lost everything. So, Well, God bless. Uh, Kalani Vieira, thank you so very, very much. Mahalo. Uh, why don't you take this opportunity? You mentioned our uh, emergency control center. Uh, Alton, get well. I know he's sick. But a lot of people, albeit the county, you know, National Guard, the Lifeguard Association, the fire, the police, EMS, everybody, a lot of these guys were running on fumes, meaning maybe three hours of sleep in 48 hours or five hours of sleep in 72 hours. There was a lot of resilience and a lot of aloha to be shared. I mean, not missing anybody. Just give a generic aloha out to everybody that is cares for our uh, fellow citizens in Ohana. One island, many peoples, all coins. Yeah, that's correct. So, yeah, I want to thank all the department, the county, the state, the government, the uh, National Guard, the Coast Guard, and all the private companies that came through uh, to making through this hard time. Everybody's coming together and trying to, you know, put all of the resources that they have and provide whatever support they can to to help um, get through this devastation, not only in the Hanalei or North Shore area, but other pe parts of the island also. Uh, I've been going to the EOC for morning briefings. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people at the EOC to, today. They've been there about a whole week. Uh, some of them working uh, around the clock just to make sure everything's getting in good working order and making sure all the, the first responders are getting all the necessary supplies and equipment that they need to help provide a good service on the north and, uh, and the south shore. So I just want to thank to everybody who's uh, helping out with this big uh, tragic um, devastation I would say and hopefully we can work together and get our island back to normal. Aloha Kauai, I'm Chantal Zarba, the marketing and event coordinator for the Kauai Lifeguard Association. I'd like to say a huge heartfelt mahalo to all the businesses and individuals who have supported KLA over the past years and who continue to support KLA today and moving forward. The Kauai Lifeguard Association wouldn't be able to do what we do for the community without your help. 
Our ocean-minded community campaigns are successful thanks to all who support KLA and our lifeguards with giving time, energy, money, and items. KLA is truly blessed for each and every one of you. The Junior Lifeguard Program State Championships at Kalapaki Beach was a huge success thanks to Priscilla and Mark Zuckerberg, Olukai, Duke's Canoe Club, and other local businesses that were sponsors of that program which teaches our keiki lifelong skills and creating a positive platform for them as they grow older. Mahalo to the lifeguards, trainers, and ohana for your support. Kauai Lifeguard Association continues to keep ocean-minded community campaigns going, and we have a lot more to do, Kauai. Again, mahalo to our Kauai Lifeguard Association supporters. KLA recently donated a tower for the Poipu area, provided jet skis, roving patrols to unguarded beaches, ocean safety messages, brochures, ocean equipment, trailers, rescue tubes, ocean safety demonstrations in schools and other areas within the community, and so much more. All towards saving lives. Kauai takes the lead in showing other islands what is possible to keep visitors and Kama'aina safe at our beaches. Surrounded by ocean, it's important for us to play an active role in keeping our ohana and visitors safe every moment possible. With more beachgoers every year, we need to make sure our lifeguards are equipped properly and that our public is ocean safety educated. Kauai Lifeguard Association has come so far because of you. We are truly grateful for your continued support. Mahalo to this year's sponsors, businesses and individuals all came together for our lifeguards and our ocean-minded community. Vala'al's Dickie Chang and Bruce Smalling, you two are amazing and a huge mahalo for all that you do to share information with our community. Once again, my name is Chantal Zarba, the Kauai Lifeguard Association Marketing and Events Director, saying a heartfelt mahalo to all of you. Please stay tuned for future events that's coming up for the Kauai Lifeguard Association. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Vala'al. As always, we'd like to sincerely thank each and every one of you for watching Vala'au and making us a part of your weekend and week out festivities here in our beautiful garden on the Kauai. Now, don't forget now, mark down your calendar for next week, Thursday, March 14th, Grand Ballroom there at the Kauai Marriott Resort and Beach Club. It's the first quarter annual meeting for our Kauai Chamber of Commerce. It is sponsored by the Kauai Marriott Resort and Beach Club and the Kauai Lifeguard Association. Looking further down the road, we will be having our uh, beach bash Again, a fundraiser for our Kauai Lifeguard Association. That's going to be happening at the Marriott, Kalapaki Beach. That's going to be on the eastern end of Kalapaki Beach. But mark down your calendar for June 1st. It is time for us to heli on. As always, let's all continue to take care of our families, our friends, the neighbors, the Malahini and the Aina. And we'll check you out next week. Only on Vala. On Vala. Vala, 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 vala.